Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest uh, ser series, uh, special number nine, Grashkor the Beast Guard. So here we are with another exciting special of Beast Quest. Again, trying to catch up with these Beast Quest specials because that's something I've got to do as well. Um, I just want to make sure I have my notes up. I should always get this up, but I don't because I don't know. I always forget. I just finished re. This is technically for me a reread because I read this book back in the day when I was a little guy. Uh, back in school days. So, this is a nice callback for me. It's been a long time since I read it. But, you know, what I remember back then was all. Oh, it was like a, Tom was in this sort of um, chamber like place and he was running around from a beast. So, back then my mind was in like wide light. My, I don't know. I, it was just a, a, like a. I was reading Beast Quest books around that time and I'm like. Uh, I was trying to find a random story to get while I was waiting, and this was the one. So, funny how that one turns out. But surprisingly enough, this book actually holds up as one of the best, one of the better specials in Beast Quest. And I'll get to that in just a second. So, let's just take a look. My notes here. Just make sure I've got everything ready to go. Alright, just load that up. Just so I can get ready for the next special, which I'm going to be doing. So I can acknowledge it at the end. I need to keep this in track when I'm doing this before I do these videos, but keep I don't remember everything, do I? Uh here we are. Uh there we go. So, got it. So let's begin this. Uh so like always, in depth story analysis and then my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So without further hesitation or ado, uh make sure you've read this book before watching this review. So that being said, let's get to this. Tom was training some recruits for Hugo's army while Hugo was away. Tom wanted to go with, but the king said he was needed there, or needed here. But seeing Tom become, but seeing Tom becoming a mentor and making other young boys be inspired, be inspired by him is really cool. It shows how Tom has impacted their lives to be a part of something bigger. Anyway, Tom got into an epic duel with his top student, Sebastian, who was outsmarted by our hero, but put up a good fight to get us in the mood for this adventure. Anyway, Silver showed up, and he appeared injured, but the bigger question was, where was Eleanor? Tom quickly called for Adaro, who was examining the wolf, and he implied only one man was capable of making such an assault, Malvel. They took Silver to Adaro's chamber, and he put Silver to sleep so he could use a dream catcher to view Silver's mind, you know, to view it, you know, to view his memories and stuff. They saw visions of Eleanor walking to her uncle's, when suddenly she w she saw some robbers trying to steal some goods off a man. She tried to help, when it turned out to be a trap by Petra. She blasted, her, she blasted Eleanor, knocking her out, and Silver was not along to follow after, which explains how he how she got into this mess, and how... Silver got into the mess as well. As for Eleanor, she was taken hostage by Petra. While at first everyone assumed Petra was behind this, it turns out it was Malvel all along. He showed up via Adaro's crystal ball, claiming he took Eleanor for payback for his ban for his banishment to Gorgonia. Uh, now he had Eleanor captive in the prison island called the Chamber of Pain. Adaro was startled and told Tom that the Chamber of Pain was guarded by was guarded not only by a powerful stormy sea but a beast guard called Grashkor. This was an evil beast who was who was banished to the Chamber of Pain you know, banished to the Chamber of Pain to be his to be its bodyguard for the prisoners. Also um, after he um, killed a, a former master of the beasts, Sir Adaro banished him here as the um, as the uh, bodyguard for that prison. Uh, so let's see here he banished him to the Chamber of Pain. Yep. After he killed yep he feeds his magic on uh, Grashkor. He feeds his magic on the prisoners that are enslaved to do enslaved to him. Probably a method of torture. Anyway, despite the dangers, Tom had to go and mount a rescue. He didn't like leaving Hugo's palace unprotected, but he hoped Hartman and the trainees could help, uh, hold up the fort. Anyway, Tom and his animal friends set off, but Tom felt he was being watched. Was it Petra? Tom was actually encountered by his prize student, Sebastian, who wanted to help. He knew Eleanor was in trouble, and he knew Tom rarely went alone. Tom reluctantly accepted the help, and they headed off to buy a boat. But they soon encountered a fisherman who wanted 20 gold coins for it, and a clever scene 
While Tom would, was easily willing to give the, the treasure for the greater cause, Sebastian saw this coming and tricked the, the fisherman to sell him the boat for a low price of eight coins. I must say I do like Sebastian. It can, if he continues being like this, this, yeah, if he continues being like this type of character, I may want to see him in other adventures. Anyway, they were about to head. They were about to head out when Silver came aboard. Unlike Storm, he wasn't willing to wait, while because El Eleanor was his mistress and he knew she needed him. So together, all three set sail. So Tom and Seb did their best making it through the seas until they reached the Chamber of Pain. They lured the boat into a route, so they're in a route now, uh, into a, they lured the boat, uh, yeah, they lured the, where was that, the, into a route they could jet in, and it got narrow, but they managed to get in in the end. When they headed on foot, they had, they, um, had to cro cross a lake-like area with stepping stones. Stepping on the wrong and you'd be, you'd regret it instantly. So Tom went first, telling Sebastian to follow his route. When they when it was revealed there was piranhas, they made double time with Silver rushing behind them. Even though that, even though safe, even though safe, they heard something coming down the two passageways. Tom and Seb encountered two cyclopses, and while Tom easily defeated his opponent, Seb was having trouble with his one. So when Tom approached the cyclops. He, uh, the Cyclops itself fell into the black water and suffered a death by the piranhas. Seb was lucky, but they picked up a path and pressed on, reaching the courtyard. Silver located Eleanor and started to howl. Eleanor tried to warn them, but it was too late. Grashkor had seen them and zoomed in heavily, zoomed in easily, knocking out Seb and making Tom end up with broken bones. Before he attempted to heal his injuries with his green jewel, Grashkor closed in. Tom was about to die when Seb recovered and mustered the courage to tackle Grashkor out of Tom's way. Amazed what Seb had done, he took the lad inside the castle, but Grashkor laughed. Now he had them trapped. By using his magic, he sealed them inside. Tom and Seb heard a man saying over and over, Once in, never out. Once in, never out. Seb told them that they would try and save them, but he claimed they were fools. Even if they escaped Grashkor, even if they escaped Grashkor, um, they would follow, you know, he would follow them, basically, even if you escape Grashkor, he would follow them anywhere that, anywhere they went, no matter what location they were in, it was part of his curse. Man, Adder really screwed Grashkor over with his punishment here. Anyway, Tom realised he had been a fool, he had underestimated Grashkor, and now they were trapped, and if he continued to grow in power, he would escape and take his vengeance on those of Avantia. It seems, in a way, uh, it seems in a way he's trying to use the curse against itself. He's planning to either overflow the prison with his, with magic so that one day he would break free, or he's storing up his magic until he's strong enough to break out of the prison. That's what I'm getting at. Tom and Seb had no way of getting out, but they did have a they they did have a way forward. They climbed up at the stairs and found Eleanor's cell. After a few hacks, rescued, they rescued his best friend, but how would they get out? Grashkorn had magic the doorway shut, so the only way out was to use the use Tom's eagle Tom's eagle feather and jump off the tower. Everyone grasped each other, grasped, grasped each other, and jumped off, hoping for the best. But something stopped their fall. Grashkorn was holding them before they had a chance to escape. Um. So yeah. So good so far. Tom and friends went for a ride by Grashkor's wings, but our heroes managed to scuffle their way to a nearby structure. Grashkor still seemed ready to ready to go, like he like he only had be he yeah. Grashkor still seemed ready to go, like he had only begun to fight. Seb volunteered volunteered to distract Grashkor as our heroes made a flee for the tunnels. Tom said they would wait for him, and boom, the plan was set. I also mentioned throughout the book they keep saying saying that they'll try to save the other prisoners, when I don't see why when all the prisoners who were supposed to be sent here are meant to be the worst of the worst prisoners. Eleanor, of course, you know, was just wound up here, so that doesn't really count for her sakes. Um, so while Seb kept Grashkor busy, Tom, Eleanor, and Silver, yeah, Tom, Eleanor, and Silver made their way through the tunnels, only to find Grashkor had planned this and used his magic to alter the tunnels. It led to an it led to the opposite side of the island, so trying to avoid the tunnels, 
They climbed around the island and attempted to reach the docking area. However, they spotted Grashkor not with any sign of injury. That wasn't a good sign. Tom hoped nothing bad had happened to Seb. But, with, but Grashkor, he was trying to dive bomb around the island. It seemed, he, it seemed he was planning to destroy the entire island now. Makes sense for two reasons. One, to stop his opponents. And two, uh, with no prison to guard, he could... He would, you know, with no prison to guard, he would be in a position where he'd be, he's no longer cursed off to the prison. Also, another note, the characters keep referring Grashkor as the Death Guard when the book says he's the Beast Guard. If, they, if that's the case, you should have called him the Death Guard in the title. Anyway, let's go on. Tom and friends made it to the boat. Tom gave Eleanor his shield so she could call on Sepron if things got worse, while Tom went back alone to not only see if Seb was still alive, but also if he could so, so he could stop Grashkor. So by this time the tunnels were flooded, he had to be careful because without his shield he, he couldn't stop like the currents of the rushing waters. Anyway, with a, anyway, after some tackling rough waters he managed to climb out the tunnels and saw the island was now capsizing, leaning on its angle. But then Seb called out and he was revealed to be alive, so that's awesome. Tom and Seb reunited, and Seb explained Grashkor was too much for him, and he was forced to hide. Tom explained he did the right thing, but now they had they had to get out of here. With little options left, they jumped into the sea. But they was they soon when they resurfaced, it wasn't long before they realized they were surrounded by sharks for company. So sharks were around them. Grashkor soon flew over and laughed. He knew there was no escape for them now. He plummeted his weapon for the killing blow. Tom and Seb were suddenly saved by Sephron, who who did us all a favour and destroyed Grashkor's weapon. Then Sephron and Grashkor planned to hit each other head on yeah, to hit each other head on. But with Grashkor's helmet, Tom he was concerned for Sephron, but luckily it didn't come to that, as Ephos arrived, blasting Grashkor into the sea. Then Ferno arrived to rescue our heroes. Grashkor crawled back to the remnants of the prison with his helmet lost. Then Tom lunged in then Tom lunged Ferno close so he could slash at Grashkor's wings. Now he had now he had no means of escape from the prison. He had become the prisoner of the prison, you could say. Um, but Tom wasn't done. He ordered Epos to topple down at, at the, the final tower on Grashkor, and just like that, Grashkor was buried under a pile of rubble. Tom and friends seemed victorious, and as they headed home, Adaro appeared via vision, explaining Grashkor would return. As part of the curse, it didn't matter if the prison was destroyed or Grashkor or the people were dead. And if you know, if the if the prison was destroyed, it didn't matter if Grashkor died. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if the prisoners died. The Beast Guard and the Chamber and the prisoners of the Pain would be rebuilt and re, uh, re brought back to life as part of the curse. I'm guessing Grashkor didn't know about this information, hence why he was trying to do it in the first place. But that does follow up with Series 15, anyway. Anyway, our heroes went home and asked Seb to stay in the army as he had to, he had what well, he you know as he had to be wary of the other villains that were coming his way. But you know, putting uh, Sebastian in the army is cool, so we, hopefully we get to see him again. But overall, there is my overall thoughts on Grashkor the Beast Guard. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed. If you did, um, you know what to do: smash the like button. Hopefully, I did good with the analysis. I, I think it did pretty well. A few scuffles in the analysis portion, but nothing too major. But overall, I think Grashkor, again, surprisingly enough, when I read this book, I didn't think much of it at the time. But rethinking it now that you're older and much more knowing of the plot, it's actually probably one of the best be beast... Um, it's probably one of the best beast quest stories ever. Uh, especially for the fight. I think Adam would really... when he, Now that he's read the book, twice probably. Um, it's probably one of the best fights in beast quest. Because the whole prison gets torn to shreds like it's a Dragon Ball Z fight. Like in uh, Frieza vs. Goku. Where like the whole island or the whole planet was bursting apart. So there were some serious stakes on here. But let's get to the characters. Uh, starting off with Tom. Tom is obviously going to be the main character here. Because like Ellen was kind of basically the damsel in distress for most of the book. Um, so Tom here, he's got a lot of right on his shoulders. He's got to go and rescue his friend. He's got to help Silver out. They've got to form a bond again. He's got to deal with the fisherman. He's got to deal with Grashkor, Malvel, Adro. He has to understand a bit. He's got to go and rescue Seb at a few points. He's got to understand what Ellen is saying from a few points. He's got so much riding on his shoulders. 
but he didn't expect all of this at once. And Crash Call was way more powerful than he expected. So this was like a startle for Tom. Like he did, at the times he felt he didn't know what to do. So that makes the, uh, the hero more vulnerable and it makes him more of an underdog. So I feel like this story really helped boost the fact that Tom still is, even though he's done all, I mean, they even make comments that, hey, Tom's all done all this great stuff. But at the end of the day, he's still just a young boy and he's still, has everything against him, so that's I appreciate the story for doing that, and with his character. Moving on to Sebastian, who is essentially Eleanor's replacement while Eleanor is in jail or prison, whatever. So Seb is actually a very underrated char side character. He basically does he's the top student of Tom, which is that that itself is impressive. That Tom is a, a mentor, like I've established. But Seb is like his top student, and he's doing everything in his power to make his icon or his hero-like figure happy and proud. He goes on a quest to help, he's willing to go on this quest to help um, rescue Eleanor, and we don't know if he's had any full proper training with this, he, like, he's the top student but we don't know how far his training is, but he's willing to go on and help them. He proves crafty by outsmarting the fishermen, he proves loyal, he, proves, he even sacrifices himself on several occasions. He goes, he's willing to help, he's having struggle with the Cyclop guards, He's trying to distract Crash Corp so that or he, so that Eleanor and Tom can escape. Of course, Silver as well. And then you know he gets his moment to shine. A few points in the book. He tackles Crash Corp at one point to save Tom's life, which is incredible. I didn't see that coming. And then of course he's actually he did manage to he surprisingly survived the destruction of the castle. Now, I thought Sebastian would die because he's a side character. It wouldn't be a surprise if they killed him off like Mark did, but no, they didn't. He surprisingly survived the um, the, cataclys the cataclysmic event of the Chamber of Prison's destruction, and the sharks didn't get him, Sephiroth, all the beasts around. He survived a lot, so he's probably one of the better allies for... If Eleanor wasn't around, I would like to see Seb be his right-hand guy. Not just as he's a loyal companion, but also because he's like his recruit, and will help further develop his training. So if Eleanor was ever to be gone from the story, I really hope Sebastian is the one to take up that mantle and fill in the void when Eleanor's not able to. But yeah, that's how good he is to me. Silver, he gets a few things to do. I mean, the reason why he's in this book is just to, to uh, get back his his mistress, Eleanor, who's in the gate, who's in the Chamber of Pain. He does help lead, lead them to her, so in a way he's basically the navigator, telling where she is, smelling her scent doing a few things here and there. He doesn't get much to do, but he does help along with the quest, so that I, feel, I will give him a little honorable mention there. Eleanor, she doesn't get much... Now, here's the thing. Eleanor, at first, since she's in the in the prison, you don't expect her to do much. She's basically... You think Beast Quest is basically... Oh, man, Beast Quest, what have you done? You've, revol you've resulted to making Eleanor a damsel in distress, like she's locked in a tower. But in the... To be honest, even though she remains in that book, or in, in the cell for quite a bit of the book, she actually is the one responsible for... Uh, she's the one responsible for um, saving our heroes at the end. She helps warn them of Crash Corp. Sure, it wasn't good timing, but she attempted to. She also... Uh, not She's the one who saves Seb and Tom at the end for the climax of bringing all, all those beasts. So if it wasn't for Eleanor... Um, yeah, and Seb, of course, Tom would be dead. But basically, at the end, her... If it wasn't at that point, Grashko was winning the entire time when he started his attack on the on the uh, prison. He was winning the entire time. They were backed into a corner where they had nowhere to turn, and then they were about to die. Eleanor was the one who calls in, like she, like Tom fought one. She's gonna call in Sephiroth, obviously, but no, he calls in. She calls in three of the six to help rescue them. So that's awesome. I did not see that coming. I mean, I did read this book before, but it's been ages, and that still surprises me. Uh, going on to Grashkor himself, now Grashkor himself is actually a, a rather more intelligent villain compared to the other ones, which kind of makes sense because he's meant to be the beast guard of the prison, so he has to communicate with the prisoners, so he does speak English. Um, he also has an intimidating weapon, which is proved very effective in battle, and he's very intelligent, he stops our heroes at multiple points, he stops them from jumping off, you know, first of all, he, he shows up, he sees them coming, like, oh, you're going to rescue Eleanor, I saw that coming, boom, I'm right in your face. And then he takes out Seb Sebastian and Tom, easy peasy, in the first fight they have. Then he locks them up in the tower, then he then he's like, oh, we're up the tower, we'll go to the top, we'll jump out. But he was expecting that too, so he grabs them by the shield and then tosses them around a bit there. 
but like, what the hell we do? We've got to run away. The, the heroes are forced to run away from this guy. That's how it, hard it is to beat him. So, t so then they try to go for the chance, but guess again, Grashko predicted that too. Like, oh, he's going to fight me. They're going to run away in the tunnels. I'll use my magic again to confuse them. He got them again. So that's pretty cool. So while he's fighting, he's still able to use his magic in a way to multitask. That's pretty awesome. And of course, he's got his wings to help out in the final act. But he's able to do a lot of destruction to the prison itself. Awesome there. That he's got that much force. He loves to die farm a lot when he doesn't have his weapon. So he's pretty, pretty effective. He's a very tactical guy. So even though he's evil, he's probably a very good prison guard. And I'm really happy that he didn't die, obviously, that he's still around. So overall, with... A great beast, great battle fight that took out, was so powerful that it destroyed the prison itself and a fa look, possibly thousands of hundreds of lives in that prison of all the prisoners. It's just amazing, really. Uh, the, the hero is great. The side character is great. There's Silver and Eleanor don't get much to do, but yep, Eleanor gets... Eleanor still, even though... Silver doesn't... Silver is the only weakness here. He doesn't get much to do, but Eleanor, even though she's the victim in the cage, she does the biggest thing to help out the heroes in the end, to help beat Grashkor. So, it's just amazing. The Beast, of course, gets some action in the end. Awesome. There's no really... I mean, the Beast is great. The story is great. Rescue your friend from the... It's the typical plot. Rescue the damsel from the tower. But they really amp it up and change it up in so many different ways. Reminds me of a lot of things. Reminds me of the Chamber of Secrets from Harry Potter. Reminds me of prison missions and films like that. A lot of good elements in play here that I was not expecting. It's just an awesome book. Uh, probably one of the better specials in Beast Quest in my opinion. And it just amazes me that I didn't figure this out until I had to get a bit older to understand the plot. But overall, I do really enjoy this special. So that'd be all from me. Uh... Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, that good stuff. Hit notification bell right corner down below so you can stay in tune with all related Peace Quest topics on my channel and various other content that is there. But that'll be all from me. I'll join you guys next time for the next Peace Quest special, which should be... Uh... Ferok the Iron Soldier. Hopefully that'll be pretty awesome too. But that'll be all from me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like always, peace.